Next up, we have uh, Bill Reed and Glenn. Bill and Glenn come to us from Piperton, Tennessee, in the Memphis area. And uh, Glenn is headed up the hill. Now, Jeff, you and Stash have had a real good run and are currently in the lead. So Mr. Bill needs to come in with a pretty good run if he wants to try to t take the lead here. We, we are in the lead currently. Um, we've got good dogs to come. Bill and Glenn is one of them. Um, Bill and Glenn only dropped uh, five points out of their prelims. Okay, we've, we've got a situation here that we'll have to see how the scores interpret it. Uh, one of our rules is that uh, if the dog uh, more or less covers the cattle, uh, makes contact with the cattle without crossing over uh, on the outrun, they're awarded an additional 15 points. We, we see a little bit of a questionable lift there on, on Glenn, and we'll have to see how the score uh, handles this before we would know what his final point total is. Also seeing a little bit of hesitation from Glenn on the lift here. Cattle have kind of faced up to him, which he's not doing anything wrong. He's, he's just trying to give the cattle a chance to measure up to him and, and move off in a quiet manner. Yeah, and I think when Glenn came around in front of those cattle, um, it kind of turned them around and gave them a view of those other heifers that are in that back there in that trailer that you can see a little bit. And I think there was maybe a little bit of a draw to those cattle. It's, it's kind of an open railed sided trailer there. Um, they could see their silhouette and probably smell them over there. So a little bit of a draw back there. It took Glenn a moment to convince those heifers to leave that corner. But uh, he's got them coming down the hill and rejoining the other three now. Absolutely. You know, this is an outstanding young dog. He's still young, but this dog's been trialing several years. You and I both saw Mr. Glenn run this dog when he was just nine months old. Yeah, he was an exceptional young dog and, uh, you know, out of a line that is certainly known for, for producing a lot of talent young, um, out of Juan Reyes' red. And, uh, and Glenn is certainly a uh, stellar example of that. Absolutely, there's a lot of people that would like to have their collar on this dog. That's for sure. Now, uh, Glenn got three head to go through the fetch panels and uh, three ducked out and missed it uh, down the hill. So it looks like uh, Bill and Glenn say we've only missed five points so far in the competition and they're in it to win it. So uh, they're going to take things back and take a little bit of time here and uh, regroup, daylight their cattle and uh, make another go. Now when you do this, when you retry an obstacle, your score for that obstacle, that, that previous score of three head through, um, then goes to zero. And so he's got to retry it once he's obviously making that retry. He can't go on at that point and take his uh, 15 points and just move on. And that looks like what he's going to do here again. Uh, again, uh, some want to split off and go around. But I tell you, if, uh, if we had to lay down bets, uh, Mr. Glenn, has, uh, Mr. Bill has, has done this for quite a few years and is an experienced uh, handler who's been in a lot of tough situations. And so having some cattle give him a little bit of a trouble, a little bit of trouble uh, doesn't upset a handler like him because he's been there and done that and he will adjust and, uh, and I know come through with uh, something he'll be happy with. I'm sure of that too, Jimmy, and you know, Bill is pretty quiet, um, certainly the uh, epitome of a southern gentleman, and uh, he handles these dogs very quietly, and, uh, and just, uh, you know, his dogs listen really well, and handle, handle his stock really well, and he, he reads his stock really well. He's got them put together really nice here, coming around this turn, uh, that's about as clean and tight going around the around that obstacle as you could ask for and fortunately for him they haven't he's he's able to keep him off of that corner and so he's being a little more efficient here as he starts his drive he is he's not going to have to pull things and it looks like that's his plan as he flanks uh, glenn out and keeps a little straighter line from around those uh, that timeline and that uh, box and t obstacle and he's going to hold those cattle off of that fence and uh, traverse that uh, irrigation ditch online and pointed straight at that uh, that drive obstacle up above and there they go right up over the irrigation ditch berm and uh, he's holding that line straight into that and that's gonna 
you know, he's certainly conserving time and it's a nice, efficient movement of their stock. He's not going to pull them off that fence like you were saying. Right I tell you, some right of those out. cattle have come out of that ditch like there was a rattlesnake in the bottom of it. But, <laughs> but, but right uh, Mr. Bill and Glenn have, have handled these cattle in a way that uh, they decided to stay together as they came out the other side. They have. It's really quiet control from behind and uh, Glenn is reading that flight zone and keeping everything tucked in. Um, his cattle are moving along and uh, he's keeping movement going. He's not having to reinitiate contact ever, but the dog is just there and the cattle are really trusting the dog and taking direction from him. You know, he's able to steer them and uh, keep everything flowing. We're not really seeing a single cow here that's trying to be an issue as we've seen some of the other handlers have to deal with, and that's certainly an advantage to the handler. Uh, comes down to just a little bit of luck of the draw and it, it can't right be helped. Out, right out. That's right and you know the, there is always some right luck out. of the draw but I'll tell you what these uh, these right Angus out. heifers from MR Angus that uh, Juan Reyes and company have uh, brought to us for this trial have just been about as good as it gets in cattle trialing. I'm sure that uh, in all your years of cattle trialing and and mine too it's, it's hard to remember a, a set of cattle that acted better and was more even and uh, really uh, worked off the dogs and allowed us to show the dogs to their full potential like we had have this week in Steamboat. You bet, you bet. It's, it's, been, uh, it's been really great and, and having, you know, we're here to show off the dogs and, and the handling ability of the handlers and having a set of cattle that are as uniform as these are sure uh, goes a long way in, in making, this, uh, making this an event everybody will appreciate and remember with fondness. That's right, and here we see a situation that we've seen a couple times this week. Those cattle ducked out of sight of the dog in that irrigation ditch, and rather than popping over the top of that berm, the dog will follow that irrigation ditch along until a handler gets him called out. Glenn's just running along, and sometimes when you see that happen, you know, the sun's out here, it's a little later in the day, later in the afternoon, the temperature's risen a little bit. Um, could be a sign of Glenn getting a little bit hot here too, and so we'll see how, how he handles it. Um, you know, he's flanking wide and, and, and staying off, but then coming in good still for Bill. Um, he's got one entering the wrong way, he's gonna have to pull that calf out. And there he did so uh, quite easily. He's going to tip them back there to the entrance of this uh, T shoot. You know, one thing we just saw sometimes you can go in and, and apply pressure to one cow, and that's the only one that feels it. But just now, when he missed the opening to the entrance, it's kind of like throwing a rock in the pond and seeing ripples go all the way to the other side because the cattle in the front wanted to take off after. That's right after he uh, applied pressure from behind. So uh, that was unfortunate for him because that's not where he wanted the mm -hmm. pressure. But, but again, he's capable of, of putting this all back together and, and yeah. finishing up clean. He and Glenn are both handling it pretty coolly. Now he's just got to get Glenn flanked around. Oh, that one calf wants to go all the way around that wing on that chute. So he's going to have to bring Glenn in there, and uh, hopefully this doesn't react like a rock on a, in a pond for him, and he can just get that one calf uh, turned around and tucked around that wing and back into that entrance. We had a good shot a while ago of where Mr. Glenn, Mr. Bill, I'm sorry, was standing uh, in that mode area, and that's as far as he can come. That's so right. He can't step outside of that mode area, and you saw there in a close-up shot of Glenn, well, Glenn's tongue is, is coming about four or five inches out the end of his mouth, and that's a sure sign that that dog's warming up. That blood flow is increased to that tongue and uh, trying to cool himself down. And so uh, we're at the, at the tail end of this course where we've got to get through the tissue and the, and the sort and that pen done. But uh, Glenn's warming up, and I imagine that Bill will um, kind of keep things quiet here and take his time. He's got ample time left. Um, so he needs to conserve his dog and uh, kind of take it easy here. He's got things lined up if he can just get a little flow going through this obstacle. There's nothing worse than having a cow turn the wrong way through a small opening. And yeah, you get one backwards and they can't see it. And cattle aren't fast thinkers. There, that one calf goes back around the edge of that wing. It's not a believer that there's an exit there. 
Um, so now he's got one out the exit, but that one's going to come back in as long as that calf doesn't come back and rejoin. There we go. If if those if that calf that had tucked out of the wing would have gone back and rejoined that one that had already exited, he would have had to day, had to daylight all of his cattle and re-enter with all of his cattle. But since Glenn flanked around and kept them separate, um, everything's still going on for full points, and uh, Bill and Glenn haven't missed a lick uh, other than possibly on that outrun um, where he came around in front of the cattle. Um, and that's up to the scorers, and we're just going to have to see how that ends up. So that one cow that had already go left the T-shoot and scored, the fact that it came back in and joined up didn't hurt him because that cow had already scored. Exactly he right. He elected to take the point that he had on that obviously. Now he's able to move out and, and, uh, and try to cut three off. The cattle have seemed to have settled pretty good. They, they were a little on the trot early in the run, but uh, they seem to have settled pretty good here. Yep, it's hot for the dog and hot for the cattle too, and they're a little less interested in running at this point of the course. Um, you can see they're sticking their heads down to graze as Bill gets his gate adjusted and sends Glenda around to uh, gently bring those calves over and so he can get uh, sort off three head and get them cut and uh, slid into that pen. Here, Bill, once again, like uh, you've talked about before, Jimmy's going to kind of let three go one direction and he's going to call Glenn in and kind of shed off those three and get them sorted off oh, nice and uh, get his gate in. shut on them. And now he is ready to go and collect and those other three head right in and there. get them around there to that alleyway well, entrance to this sort, sort pen. I tell you, it, we've talked about several people that have cut just pulled their dog in on those three and, and kind of shedded them off. And that is such a handy thing to have. Uh, uh, I know you've done it, I've done it, just it allows you once your cattle are, are dog broke and used to you and used to the dog, it allows you to do a lot of sorting right out in the, at a pasture gate where otherwise people would have to have to corral their cattle and, and then sort them and, and then take them in individual groups and, That's right. and especially when you've just got a few to do sometimes it, it's sure handy to have that that tool in your tool bag. It is and it's you know Everything you do and you teach that shed and that sword, it's a higher level of partnership and a better level of understanding of stockmanship with your dog. And that's really what we're here to showcase in Steamboat is that partnership and stockmanship um, that you, you have with that dog. And it, it certainly is uh, on display um, on a lot of these runs here we've had in Steamboat. I might mention here we've got, you know, a handler's choice as, as to what side of the sword obstacle they work on. We've seen almost all the other handlers come on the near side, the, the north side, uh, and let their dog cover on the other side if necessary, but that's, Mr. That's, Bill chose to chose to do right. just the opposite. It was Bill and myself actually who, who chose to do that sword in that way. It's the way it made sense to me and I guess it's the way it made sense to Bill too. Um, Dorrance and Kayleen made it work uh, the, the other way, um, which is fine. It's up to the handler. They, the two went out the south gate and the one went out the west. And now Bill's getting his cattle sorted, or, or not sorted, but regrouped and uh, headed back out towards the exhaust. Bill has plenty of time left and uh, he's gonna be uh, in good shape here. It's uh, everything as far as the uh, obstacle portion of the course is full points. He's completed everything. It's just gonna be up to the score and it's a close call up there on the top um, but we'll leave that up to uh, our capable scorer, Dan Gill, and how he sees that, whether or not it was a crossover, Jimmy. Okay, Jeff, we've gotten the official word from the scoring table, and Mr. Bill Reed and Glenn ended up with a score of 270. It was decided that there was a crossover, and unfortunately he did not get those 15 points added to his outrun or to his total. This gives him a overall or combined score of 535 and puts him in second place behind you and Stash. Uh, congratulations, that was a good run by Mr. Bill, uh, Mr. Bill Reed and, and his dog, Glenn. We're visiting again with Mr. Bill Reed from Piperton, Tennessee, and his dog, Glenn. When he came off the course a while ago, Glenn was taking a break, but we've brought him back because he is, it's now determined that they are the reserve national champion at the National Cattle Dog Finals. Congratulations, Mr. Bill. Well, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, now, I recall you starting this dog trial at a very young age. 
Yes, that's right. He started trialing at about nine months of age. <clears throat> Youngest dog I've ever had that would, you know, run a full course. Uh, he's been an exceptionally young dog, and uh, I've really enjoyed running him. Well, Mr. Bell, you, you had a good run, and you've put, in fact, put three good runs together, and it all added up to, uh, to Reserve National Champion. And so, again, congratulations, and thanks for being here. Well, thank you. I, I really feel fortunate to uh, have been able to run against the top handlers in the country and the top dogs and come out as well as I did because uh, these handlers here and these dogs here have improved so much in the last few years. It's just unbelievable, and it's really hard to... Uh, to win a trial now well uh, they finally come up to your level mr 20, bill about about 20 of the dogs out there any one of them could have won it you know it's uh it's amazing so uh, i feel very fortunate to have uh, done as well as i did well again congratulations thank you thank you